Hello, I'm Master Sergeant Jason Nichols. I'm the G1 Automated Boards and APSN CUIC here at Joint Force Headquarters. I'm here to talk to you today about the Enlisted Promotion System and the National Guard Automated Board System. Let's talk about the promotion process. The Army National Guard promotion system that we use now is in effect the same system we've always used. We still consider all eligible soldiers, we still evaluate each soldier's potential, and we still rank each soldier and select the best for promotion. What is different is that now we use the National Guard Automated Board System, or NGABS. NGABS is a program that allows us to automate the voting process and create an order of merit list, or OML, that ranks applicants from highest to lowest. NGABS allows us to do away with paper promotion packets and removes the need for administrative points, instead focusing on the whole soldier concept. Let's define the whole soldier concept. The whole soldier concept consists of eight categories that together make up a complete and well-rounded soldier. They consist of job performance, potential, leadership, dedication and attitude, physical fitness, assignment history, professional development, awards, honors, and discipline. As you know, there are different levels of NCOES required to be promoted to the different NCO ranks. A new requirement that you should be aware of is Structured Self-Development, or SSD, an online distance learning program. Effective 1 January 2014, SSD will be a requirement for promotion eligibility. Get with your training NCO to get information about or enrolled in SSD to ensure that you remain promotion eligible. Promotion to Sergeant through Sergeant Major. To be considered for promotion, you must first go through the board process, be in a promotable status, and be participating satisfactorily in the Army National Guard in the next lower grade. A flag does not preclude you from being boarded, but you will not be eligible to be promoted until your flag has been removed. Previously, I discussed promotable status. Let's talk about what a non-promotable status is. Leaders at all levels are responsible to notify the promotion authority when a soldier is in a non-promotable status. Why could you be placed in a non-promotable status? Non-promotable status reasons include but are not limited to AWOL, EQRB non-selection, retirement approval, assignment to the ING, or a written recommendation from the soldier's chain of command. Let's talk about the board. Every board consists of the preparation or pre-board, the actual board where soldiers are evaluated, and post-board, posting of the promotion list or OML. Pre-board. Preparation is the most important part of the board for a soldier submitting a packet. Prior to the board, it is imperative that you review your IPERMS file for accuracy. Remember, soldiers are their best personnel clerks. You know what you've done in your career and what should be in your record. Some key documents to review in your IPERMS file are NCOERs, awards, military education to include NCOES, other resident military courses, and correspondence courses, civilian education. Also, it's very important to make sure your ERB is correct. Make sure that your ERB matches your IPERMS file. Make sure all of your annual certifications, qualifications, and evaluations have been completed and there are no gaps. Talk to your unit full-time staff to ensure that all of your necessary SIDPERS transactions have been done to capture any necessary updates. Pay close attention to your 4100 to make sure all information is accurate and that you chose the proper mileage election and initialed any other elections that you want to be considered for. This is the time to ask questions of your full-time staff. If you aren't sure, ask. There are no stupid questions. Letters to the President of the Board. If you feel that something is missing from your packet and it will affect the board deliberation, by all means, write a letter to the President of the Board. A format sample of this letter is included with the MOI every board cycle. 
Let's talk about the responsibility of the board members when evaluating soldiers. Board members will evaluate each soldier's board file equally and fairly according to the board member memorandum of instruction and current regulation based on their performance and potential using the whole soldier concept we spoke about earlier. The sum of each soldier's qualities and qualification, matters of record, past performance with the heaviest weight given to the recent past and the soldier's potential to serve in positions of greater responsibility will be considered objectively. When the board convenes, the president of the board will provide guidance to the board and then they will all participate in establishing a baseline. The baseline will allow the board members to rate a soldier based on the soldier's packet quickly and effectively. Let's talk about how a baseline is created. This is the form that the board will use to develop their panel standards. The form is broken down into two sections. On the left is the meaty portion of the vote score. Duty position, performance and leadership, and potential in order to determine the number, or the hard vote, portion of the vote score. On the upper right, you will use these areas score with a plus, neutral, or minus. The form that you're looking at is just a sample and each board's form will look different. The voting system. Shown here is a word picture of the voting system and the scores used when records are reviewed by a board. Scores range from a low of 2 to a high of 6 with a plus and minus used to further weigh each score. Using this voting system, all members in a panel vote each record independently under what is known as the blind voting method. This means that members may not discuss individual records while voting. The scores issued are used to determine which NCOs are fully qualified for selection and then which NCOs are the best qualified for selection in each MOS. Based on the needs of the Army, the best qualified NCOs are selected for promotion and or schooling before a board can determine if an NCO is among the best qualified for selection, it must first determine which NCOs are fully qualified. To be considered fully qualified, the board must satisfy themselves that an NCO is qualified professionally and morally, has demonstrated integrity, is physically fit, and is capable of performing the duties in the next higher grade. The scores of three through six identify NCOs as being fully qualified for promotion or selection. If an NCO is not considered fully qualified, a score of two is appropriate to retain in grade. Boards usually consist of between seven and 11 voting members. Only the first five votes count and no one board member knows which applicants the other board members have voted on. When establishing a baseline, you will start in the middle and establish the average or middle of the road soldier, a four. Then you set the baseline for the soldiers that clearly shine above their peers, the sixes. The baseline for the soldiers that should not be promoted now, the twos, and then you will decide what a three and a five consist of. Next, you will establish what the plus and minus should be for the remaining whole soldier areas. Here's an example of what the baseline for a 6 plus might look like. On the NCO ERs, strong performance and leadership bullets, high potential, high PT scores. They may also have gotten recent awards and accolades. Here's an example of the baseline for what a 3 minus might look like. Missing documents in their packet for my perms, their non-duty MOSQ, they exceed height and weight standards, and so on. The board voting steps. When the board begins voting, they will review NCOERs, 1059s, job performance, leadership, potential, if the soldier lives the Army values, and APFT height and weight standards. Next, the board will assess experience and assignments, education, both military and civilian, and assignment history in your CPMOS. CPMOS is your career progression MOS. 
It indicates to soldiers the channel in which they should expand professional development and seek assignments. It also indicates to commanders and personnel managers the MOS in which the soldier should be assigned at the current and higher grades. The CPMOS will normally be the primary MOS unless there is a compelling reason to choose another MOS in which the soldier is qualified or is directed to become qualified. In most cases, soldiers must be qualified in their CPMOS to maintain promotion list status. The board will now review IPERMS documents and assess awards, honors, and any disciplinary issues. Finally, the board will review DA photos and any other documents submitted in your electronic packet. Once the board members have reviewed all necessary documents, they vote. Let's talk about vote deviations or aberrants. There will be instances when one or more of the voters differ on a single record by as many as one or more point scores. When this situation occurs, the deviation will be brought to the attention of the panel chief or president of the board. Voters determine what caused the deviation and adjust scores accordingly. The panel chief must ensure that the deviation is resolved to less than a one point difference. The primary purpose of monitoring and correcting score deviations is to ensure that voters have not overlooked important information in a file, that voters are applying the panel standards in the agreed upon manner, and that no one was given an unjust score due to personal knowledge of the soldier. Let's talk some more about aberrant votes. An aberrant vote is a score given by a member to an applicant which is outside the range of scores given that applicant by the rest of the board's members. Votes are monitored by the program to ensure consistency in the voting and to assist members with voting, i.e. aberrant votes may be an indication that details were missed or should be reviewed. Applicants with aberrant scores have to be reviewed. Since an aberrant vote on any particular applicant is based on the average of all votes for that applicant, it can only be calculated after all the members have voted on that particular applicant. Board members should be advised to periodically check aberrant scores when the board is nearing a completion of 50% so they can address any aberrant scores as they go along rather than to wait until the end of the board and then discover they have many to review. Members must save their scores as they review applicants and not write them down on paper to enter them all at the end. Since all votes for an applicant have to be cast to calculate aberrants, not registering the scores will prevent the aberrant calculation for all members. Aberrant scores are based only on the whole numbers, 2 through 6, and not the plus or minus options. This diagram is an example with five members voting on seven applicants displaying the scores with aberrants shown in red. This slide shows an aberrant. There will be instances when one or more of the voters differs on a single record by as many as two or more point scores. When this situation occurs, the deviation will be brought to the attention of the panel chief or president of the board. Voters determine what caused the deviation and adjust their scores accordingly. The panel chief or president must ensure the deviation is resolved to less than a two-point difference. Again, the primary purpose of monitoring and correcting score deviations is to ensure that voters have not overlooked important information in a file, that voters are applying the panel standards in the agreed upon manner, or that no one was given an unjust score due to personal knowledge of the soldier. After the board member that was an aberrant adjust his or her vote to come in line with the rest of the voting members, the board may proceed. As you can see here, the board member that was an aberrant corrected their vote, and the board can continue. What happens when there is a tie? There are over 200 tiebreakers built into the NGABS system. Date of rank, pantry basic date, and the date of birth are the first three criteria used to break ties. The post board process. Once the board is closed out, an order of merit list is generated. The OML does not contain any actual points, but just the soldier's position on the OML. One thing I want to make clear 
is that the board members are the only personnel that establish a baseline. There is no predetermined baseline. The baseline and NGABS use the whole soldier concept we spoke about earlier to fairly evaluate soldiers. Do you want to get promoted? Let's talk about the keys to getting promoted. Appearance and fitness. All soldiers should maintain an impressive appearance and be physically fit. While the minimum APFT score of 180 is the standard for passing, remember that you are competing against your peers. In order to stand out from your peers, you should strive to do your best on every PT test. Your DA photo is one of the most important pieces of your EPS packet. Since you are not appearing in front of the board members, it allows them to put a face to the packet. A story of the soldier's career can be told by viewing the DA photo. Awards, time in service, overseas deployment, and many other important qualifications can be seen in the DA photo. It also allows the board members to see if you are following instructions. Is your photo current? Is your uniform set up correctly and does it fit properly? Do you look like a soldier? The board takes all of these into consideration when viewing your packet and photo. For senior NCOs, failure to submit a photo not only shows that you are not following instructions, but it could also give the appearance that you don't care and could bring scrutiny upon your packet by board members. While DA photos are mandatory for staff sergeants and above, sergeants and below can show great initiative by submitting an official photo with their promotion packet. Military education. Be proactive and complete all MOSQ, NCOES, and SSD requirements as soon as possible. Taking initiative and enrolling in military education can keep you one step ahead of your peers and it can reflect when the promotion list is released. Civilian education. Attending college and obtaining a degree not only shows your drive and your need for success, but it can put you ahead of your peers on promotion boards. Utilize your college benefits and set yourself up for success not only while in the National Guard, but for your life after your Guard career is ended. Performance and potential. As an NCO, you should be the subject matter expert in your field, as well as a trainer for the soldiers in your charge. If you be, know, and do all the time, it will be reflected in your performance and potential evaluations. Leadership. NCOs make it happen. You need to accept the mission, plan the mission, explain the mission to your soldiers, and accomplish the mission. You should constantly be challenging yourself and your subordinates to better themselves through schooling and training. You should always do what is right, even when no one else is looking, and set the example for peers and subordinates to emulate. The promotion list. Once the promotion list is published, all soldiers eligible and qualified can be promoted into available positions. Declining promotion. In most cases, if you decline a promotion, you will be removed from promotion consideration until the next promotion list is released. There are, however, certain situations that include military technician positions and family or medical hardships that may allow you to stay on the promotion list. Make sure you talk to your chain of command and get all the facts before you decline a promotion. Command Initiated Removal Any commander in the chain of command may recommend that a soldier be removed from an approved promotion list at any time. I hope this presentation has been beneficial in explaining some of the ins and outs of the enlisted promotion system and NGABS. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sergeant Major Diana Staten, 
and I am here to talk to you about the new EPS board process and what my opinion is regarding if the process is fair. As soldiers, nothing has changed on what the military requires from you, so you can move on. This is the whole soldier concept. Do your job. Strive to be better. Show potential to move up. Also, complete your military education. Pass the APFT and don't be put on the height and weight program. Also, start college. It can only help. As far as the EPS board process goes, getting seven board members, especially seven sergeant majors and command sergeant majors to agree on a baseline in order to grade a soldier on their potential and promise in this organization is not an easy task. This can be a long process even before they start looking at a soldier's packet. However, once this is done, the board members can't deviate from their decision. A baseline is what all board members agree is most important to grade a soldier on and their potential of moving up and getting promoted for that promotion board. An example is the board members agree that the NCOR is the most important part of grading a soldier and agree what part of the NCOER is going to be graded. If you, a soldier, have great NCOERs, then you have nothing to worry about. The system or program won't let one individual express bias. In other words, board members can't favor or dislike an individual soldier that has put a packet in for promotion. Each promotion board held will be different because you will have different board members and different priorities. I have been in, in the military for 26 years and find that we are always trying to make the organization better and the process is better. My first opinion before I knew it would work was that it wouldn't and we would have to change it again. However, being on a board and seeing how it works, it really is very fair and doesn't show bias. If you ever get a chance to be on the promotion board, don't turn it down so you can see for yourself. I have one question you need to ask yourself. Am I doing what it takes to be the best? Good luck and thank you for your service. Hello, I'm Command Sergeant Major Robert Graves, the State Command Sergeant Major for the North Carolina Army National Guard. I have also served as the president of many of the EPS boards. Over time, our EPS system has evolved into what it is today. I am confident it will continue to improve. It is not perfect. I am not sure if there is a perfect system. The present system does give each soldier a fair and equal opportunity to advance in our organization. The EPS system is very competitive, which is good. You have heard of the whole soldier concept. You must realize that no one area will make or break you. You, with the help of your unit administrator, must convince the EPS panel that you are ready and have the tools for the next rank. You will do this through your packet. Once the board receives your packet, it will be compared to the baseline. Notice I said the baseline and not other packets. The baseline will evolve from year to year, the same way our soldiers and organization must evolve. Once all of the packets are evaluated, the system will establish an order of merit list that will be used to fill slots as they become vacant. Believe me when I say that the only person that can influence the board is you through your packet. You need to understand the EPS system and how it works, but I would recommend that you concentrate your efforts on self-improvement and creating the most complete and accurate packet possible for the board to evaluate. If you want to know where you need to improve, simply compare yourself to the perfect soldier. Remember, even if every soldier was perfect, someone would be first and someone would be number two and so on. Thank you. Thanks, Sergeant Major Graves. I am Sergeant Major John Swart, the Command Senior Enlisted Leader for the North Carolina National Guard. Sergeant Major Graves and I work close together on all matters concerning enlisted soldiers. The enlisted promotion system is very important to us in this organization. The purpose, the purpose of this video is to better educate and inform our NCO leaders and soldiers concerning the enlisted promotion system. We both want all of you to do and be your very best. In closing, I want to emphasize three things. First of all, the whole soldier concept. Do the best you can in all areas and work on the areas you know you can improve on the most. 
Second, follow instructions. Having a correct packet shows everyone that you have the ability to follow instructions. This also shows leadership. Missing a photo, bio, or other important document does not. And finally, your IPERMS file and your ERB. Your ERB is your enlisted records brief. Review your IPERMS file and ERB prior to each board, at least annually, to ensure that it's up to date and accurate. Missing important information and documents do not help. If you need additional training or information concerning your IPERMS file or ERB, ask your NCO support channel for assistance. Also, your unit can request training support from our G1 section if needed. Thank you.